Hi, thank you so much for inviting me to today's session. Uh, here are my disclosures. I am an expert consult consultant for the website understood.org. I will not discuss any off-label use of products or anything that is non-evidence based. Today, we will review the national statistics related to ADHD in the United States and BIPOC children. We will discuss the symptoms and lifetime course of ADHD for BIPOC children and adults. And we will describe effective ways of helping and supportive BIPOC children, adolescents, and their families who have ADHD. How common is ADHD? Well, worldwide, about 5% of people have ADHD. In the United States, about 10% of children and adolescents have ADHD, and about 5% of adults in the United States have ADHD. ADHD is three times more common in boys than it is in girls. And when it comes to the diagnosis of ADHD, we know that Black, Latinx, Asian American, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, American Indians, and Native Alaskan children are less likely to be diagnosed with ADHD than white children are. And we know that Black, Latinx, and American Indian, Alaskan Native children are less likely to receive appropriate treatment and interventions for ADHD when compared to their white counterparts. When it comes to the criminal legal system, individuals who have ADHD are likely to come in early contact with the criminal legal system, especially those uh, who are at the more likely to drop out of high school. So one of the risk factors for getting involved with the criminal legal system is dropping out of high school. Um, we also know that Black, Latinx, and American Indian and, and Native Alaskan boys are much more likely to be in contact with the legal system uh, at er earlier ages. And about 40% of the prison population actually has ADHD. Now, what do we know about ADHD in BIPOC children? We know that Black and Latinx kids are much less likely to be diagnosed with ADHD and they tend to be diagnosed at later ages. The other thing is communities of color in general have a lot less information about ADHD than white communities do. Therefore, when they have done surveys of African-American parents and Latinx American parents, those parents report having less knowledge about ADHD. And Asian American parents are the least likely of all to even go to the doctor to report that their child may have ADHD. Therefore, those children have the lowest rates of the diagnosis of ADHD. So in essence, BIPOC communities overall have less access to accurate and up-to-date health information about ADHD. Therefore, parents in these communities really don't know as much about ADHD and are less likely to take their child to the doctor to even have them evaluated for ADHD. What we've also found is that when it comes to African-American, Latinx, uh, Asian-American and American Indian parents, they perceive their child's behavior very differently than the way teachers perceive their behaviors. And if you look at public school teachers, 80% of them are white and female and they often perceive that child's behavior differently than the parents do. And this is what the literature has found. The research shows that African-American parents view ADHD as not a medical diagnosis that's neurobiological and genetic. They see it as a result of poor parenting skills, that Black parents just ain't controlling their kids well enough, and if they control their kids, that kid wouldn't have ADHD because there's a lack of information in the community about ADHD. Latinx parents view ADHD as a societal influence. My kid didn't start acting this way until they started being around all these other American kids. So, you know, if the society says it's a problem, then, you know, this really doesn't exist in my home country. You know, we don't have ADHD in Guatemala. Yes, you have ADHD in Guatemala. You just didn't realize you had ADHD in Guatemala. And then with Asian American parents, they're less likely to go to the doctor, as I said before, to even pursue help for ADHD because they see ADHD as just an inherent problem with lack of self-discipline. So it's very interesting in how the diagnosis is perceived by these different communities. Unfortunately, the literature finds that African-American and Latinx children are a lot less likely to receive medication to treat their ADHD for a variety of reasons. So these are the African-American and Latinx American kids who actually are diagnosed with ADHD. They're less likely to be treated with medications. And when they are treated with medications, they take medicines for a shorter duration of time than white children who have ADHD. And there are a number of longstanding reasons, including institutional racism, institutionalized racism, that contribute to why African-American and Latinx communities um, are not receiving the appropriate treatments for ADHD. So part of it is just barriers to access to healthcare, right? 
So we tend to see higher uninsured and underinsured rates for African-American and Latinx children or not having appropriate um, mental health insurance on their insurance plan where their behavioral health is not even covered. Um, as we've also already spoken, there's a lot less ac information access with up-to-date health information about ADHD in all languages and that are directed toward various cultural groups that presents information in a way that those cultural groups can understand, uh, relate to, and accept. Very often, these types of behavioral health disorders are perceived to be a white people problem and that it just really doesn't apply to people of color or to BIPOC communities. And that isn't true because ADHD has been reported in every country, every continent on the planet, y'all. But again, if we go back to the social determinants of health, there are many reasons why our BIPOC communities are not receiving the kind of treatments that they need that are uh, external to the community and internal to the community. And oh, I forgot, if you go back and also look at uh, healthcare barriers that also includes physician raci racist behaviors that are couched in physician implicit racial bias. We know that the vast majority of doctors, physicians in the United States have anti-Black, anti-Latin X, and anti-American Indian racial bias. And they have anti-dark skin bias. And we know that the physicians and the pediatricians who have that bias are actually less likely to talk to parents and kids about developmental disabilities and behavior disorders. They're less likely to refer those families to appropriate subspecialty care and for evaluations and for treatment. So of course there are physician level, uh, physician level and healthcare system level concerns that disrupt the community's ability to get the treatment that they need. A lot of parents, uh, we said that African-American, Latinx, and Asian-American parents are much more reluctant to accept medication management for their children with ADHD because they're concerned about a, a lot of side effects, right? They're concerned about side effects. They're concerned about addiction. Um, they have concerns that medications are used to control kids. Um, and also they have inconsistent access to medical providers who can actually prescribe ADHD medicines. We've talked about this. And so all of that makes it harder for parents who have kids with ADHD to get the treatment that they need. I would like to tell you that when it comes to, um, to medications and ADHD, people who have uh, ADHD intake medications are much less likely to become addicted to medicines um, for to drugs because they've experienced the calm that medications with ADHD provides them, okay? The side effects for ADHD are short-lived and fully reversible, they're not permanent. So here's a summary. So ADHD is found in all populations on the planet. However, BIPOC children are less likely to be diagnosed and appropriately treated for this medical condition. BIPOC communities have less access to accurate, up-to-date health information about ADHD. Therefore, they're less likely to seek treatment or to um, understand the symptoms their child is exhibiting that it's an actual medical problem. An appropriate comprehensive treatment for ADHD is really important for, for positive outcomes in the lives of individuals who have ADHD.